him down and Stout able to uh, get the takedown. So Stout off to a 2 nothing lead on Carter Hubka. Main uh, thing that Coach Friedop brought up in the pre-meet interview, the Vikings going to be without Sean Truen tonight due to some illness at 195. And hopefully Sean can be all better by the Flanagan Invitational on Saturday. Stout trying to cradle up Hubka, but they run out of real estate on the far side. And they go out of bounds with a minute 22 left here in the first period. As we mentioned, Charles City took care of walk-on. 78 to nothing walk-on with three open weights tonight. Hubka quick off the whistle trying to hit a switch. He able, he's able to get to his feet, but Stout able to keep the hand control and take him back down to the mat. Good mat return there for Stout. And it's a 2 nothing lead yet for Stout. And Stout now trying to move Hubka's arm up on the back. He has control of the head. Working off to the side. Now he... Trying to lock something up. He has plenty of time to do something here with 55 seconds left here in the period. A 2 nothing lead for Adam Stout of Charles City. And now Stout getting some back points on Carter Hubka. Stout has Hubka now on his back. Hubka coming in this season at an 8-7 and seven record. And Stout coming in with an 8-4 and four record. A pair of sophomores getting together here tonight in our first duel. The hold is released, and it's a 5 nothing lead for Charles City's Adam Stout here at 113 pounds. Stout riding pretty tough once again with 15 seconds left here in the period. J.V. Matt off to our right, in the uh, or our left, and our varsity Matt off to our right. Here's Hubke able to get an escape with five seconds left in the period. And Stout leads him now by a 5-1 to one margin as the first period will come to an end. Just underway to Cora and Charles City. Adam Stout at 113. Carter Hubka at 113. Pair of sophomores duking it out. It'll be Charles City's choice, and Stout will take down to start the second period. Each of these wrestlers with eight wins. Now Stout with nine after his forfeit victory over Walk-On earlier tonight. As we mentioned, Charles City defeated Walk-On 78 to nothing. Charles City wrestling the second duel tonight, and then Decor and Walk-On will wrestle the third duel. Decor and Walk-On wrestling three times within the next nine days. They will wrestle in Decor next uh, Thursday night. And that will be a... home meet for the Vikings, and then Walk-On will also be a part of the Decor duels coming up on the 18th of this month, Hubka still in the top position. Hasn't been able to hook anything up yet. Has control of the near side wrist. Now locks the arm up underneath Stout. He's working off to the side with a minute nine left here in the period. Stout not doing much, but Carter not doing much to take advantage of it here at the present time. He's got the arms locked up once again. Now trying to move the wrist and arm up on the back is Hubka. Stout has been able to establish a base, but Hubka knocks him back down to the mat. 45 seconds left here in the period. A 5-1 lead for Stout on a takedown. And three near fall points in that first period. Hubka got the escape. With six seconds left in the period. Now Hubka got, has the arm up on the back. Has control of the far side wrist. Now works off to the tri side trying to step over and make something work. 16 seconds left here in the period. Not enough to get any back points yet. And Stout able to get out of it. Now a stall warning on Stout. With seven seconds left in the period. 3-2-1, and Hubka rides him out but doesn't score any points, so we go to the third with Stout leading by a 5-1 to one margin. It'll be Hubka's choice, and looks over towards Coach Friedhoff and Coach Kittleson, and Hubka is going to go in the top position. He almost had him turned once, so what the heck, might as well try it again. As Stout trying to sit out, Hubka provides some good hip pressure. Hubka puts the head in the armpit, reaching for the far side elbow. Doesn't have anything locked up. Up low, as Stout has been able to establish a little bit of a base, but Hubka chops him back down. 
Five one the score, Stout on tap. He's been in the down position since the start of the second period. And now Hupka trying to get a leg in. He's got the legs wrapped up around the middle body, but he's riding a little bit high. Stout trying to get to a peek through position. 117 left here in the third period, a 5-1 lead for Stout. Stout has been warned for stalling on the bottom once. Hupka has that leg locked in. Trying to trap the head and tilt that into a position, but Stout has been able to get the arm free from the bottom position. Hupka still with the legs around the head of Stout, and Stout now able to get the head free, and he steps over, covers Hupka, and gets the reversal to make it a 7-1 margin. 44 seconds left here in the period at 113. We are just underway. This is the first match of the duel. Decorah and Charles City tonight. Charles City coming in a 7-6 and six record. Decorah is 3-6 and six here at the present time. Hupka trying to sit out, or Decorah is actually, yep, 3-7, and seven, as Hubke able to get a reversal there to make it 7-3. 17 seconds left here in the period. Hubka has the legs trapped and can't keep that leg trap, so Stout gets another reversal, and at the end of the third period, Stout will go off with the victory by a 9-3 margin. A 9-3 margin. Stout getting the victory. And let's move on to 120. This is Johnny Etherington. Number five ranked kid for Charles City and Devin Stortz for Decorah. Devin had a nice victory down at West Delaware. Coach Friedhoff talked about that in the pre-meet show. He's now 10 and 6 on the season. He is a sophomore, Johnny Etherington, a junior at 12 and 3. Etherington is the fifth ranked wrestler in 2014 here in Class 2A in the predicament rankings that just came out. Scramble situation, no scoring. They go out of bounds. 138 left here in the first period. Charles City leads the duel 3-0 on the Adam Stout victory at 113 over Carter Hubka. Here's Johnny Etherington in on a shot. Stortz able to get the hips back to this point. Etherington has the ankle of Stortz, but Stortz now able to break the grip of the ankle, gets the hips back, and they go out of bounds. And it's 113 left here in the period. We are scoreless between Devin Stortz and Johnny Etherington. Forehead to forehead tie with both men. Both men working a wrist. Sorts tried to get in on a level change duck under shot, but Etherington able to cover him up and get the takedown with a minute left here in the period. A 2 0 lead for the fifth ranked wrestler in Class 2A. One of three ranked wrestlers for the Charles City Comets. Comets had their best showing of the season at the Battle of Waterloo. In fact, the four semifinal teams of the four semifinal teams at the Battle of Waterloo, three were from the Northeast Iowa Conference. And the Vikings will see another one of those teams two weeks from tonight when Cresco comes to town. Stalemate called with 34 seconds left here in the first period. Storch trailing 2-0 to Johnny Etherington. Devin's done some nice things. Making some progress since the start of the year and an early cover by Etherington will cause a caution. Ten and six for the sophomore. Etherington, a junior. Great wrestling name. A third generation state qualifier. His brother Jesse was a Pretty good wrestler. Jesse graduated last year as Etherington has an arm locked up, and now he's working the legs of Stortz. He has the legs trapped around the left leg of Stortz, working, and the left wrist locked up on top, trying to turn him that way, but he runs out of time here in the first period. And it's a 2-0 lead for Johnny Etherington. 
Storch defers his choice, and Etherington goes down to start the second period. Storch quickly off to the side as he was quicker off the whistle that time. Etherington able to get to his feet, gets the hand control. Now gets out and tries to circle around to get the escape, and he's able to do so, and Etherington makes it a 4 nothing advantage. Good job of officiating there by one of the best in the business, Mike Denner. Etherington got out but had his arms around the waist of Stortz. A lot of officials would uh, give that quick one right there, but Denner let the sequence develop and give the two points to Johnny Etherington. Etherington up by a 4-0 margin. He's trying an arm bar. He's got the arm bar on one side. Devin trying to get that wrist free. Etherington has a leg in as they wrestle on the near side of the mat. 55 seconds left here in the second period. 3-0 lead in the duel for the Comets on an Adam Stout 9-3 win over Carter Hupka at 113. That's where we started tonight. Etherington now loses the legs. Now has the arm and is trying to tilt him that way. And he got a one count. Now he gets multiple back points as he's got the arm locked up on one side and the leg locked up on the other. He gets a couple of couple of points there. He's got the arm locked up. Once again, has the wrist tied up. Devin able to get that wrist free as he tried to tilt him, did Etherington, but he was unsuccessful in that attempt. Now the grip has been loosened. Three back points awarded for Etherington. And is a 7 to nothing lead as the whistle sounds for the end of the second period. Johnny Etherington leading 7 nothing as we go to the third, and Devin Stort's going to go neutral to start the third period. Forehead to forehead tie with both men. Stort tries a level change. Etherington staying in good position. Etherington charges into Stort, and both men go out of bounds with no scoring. 148 left here in the third period, a 7 0 lead for Johnny Etherington. Comets lead the duel by a 3 0 margin. Etherington with the left wrist of Stortz trapped as both men in a forehead-to-forehead tie. Etherington tries the shot with the wrist trapped. Couldn't make anything work there as Stortz got the hips back. Etherington now working the front head of Stortz and both men spin out of bounds with a minute 23 left here in the period. 7-0 lead for Johnny Etherington, the fifth-ranked wrestler in Class 2A. At 120 pounds, the junior for the Charles City Comets. Forehead to forehead tie with both men, and now Stortz hit for a stall warning. As Etherington tries a shot unsuccessfully, and both men go out of bounds. Coach Friedhoff telling Stortz, you're down 7-0, and you're getting hit for stalling. That's not the way you want to do it. Forehead to forehead tie with both men. Storch tries a level change once again. Etherington tries to duck under that shot and circle around. Storch tried to stuff the head but ran out of real estate on the side of the mat. 7 0 the score. Etherington leading with 48 seconds left here in the period. Storch tried the neutral position to start the third period and has been unable to score in that position. Etherington tries a trip, but he tried it from too far away. Now Etherington takes down Stortz and wraps the arms up. Has Stortz on his back. Stortz able to belly out of it. Etherington's going to get a couple of back points in addition to the takedown. It's going to be an 11 to nothing lead for Etherington with 15 seconds left here in the period. Etherington has the wrist tied up. Stortz able to get that one free. And it'll be a major decision win for Johnny Etherington here at 120. Johnny Etherington gives the Comets a 7 to nothing lead here at 120 with an 11 to nothing victory over Devin Stortz.
Scheduled to go next, Max Forsyth for Charles City. And Dirk Clark for the Cora. Clark, the senior in his first match of the year, Max Forsyth. For the Comets, the sophomore at 7-7. Seven and seven. Clark ready to go. And here we go at 126. Stout over Hubken 9-3. Etherington, a major decision on Devin Stortz. And here is a takedown for Dirk Clark. Forsyth charged into him. Clark got him around the hips and was able to lift him and take him down. And it's a 2-0 lead for Dirk Clark. Bikes trail the duel by a 7-0 margin. They'll wrestle walk-on later on tonight. There'll be about a 15-minute break between those duels because it's youth wrestling night and parents' night here at walk-on. Information passed on to me by Steve Platson on the public address tonight. 112 left here in the period. A 2-0 lead for Dirk Clark. Clark working off to the side. Has the wrist tied up on the near side. But loses the hip pressure. Getting to his feet is Forsyth. And now Dirk Clark puts him in a headlock. Forsyth reaching to stop the head. Now Forsyth steps over. And now has Dirk on his back. He gets the reversal. Dirk able to get off his back. Forsyth had the half in and didn't continue with it. But it's a 2-2 score with 38 seconds left here in the first period. Forsyth traps the wrist. Trying to tie up the hip on the one side. Forsyth with the, old, the head in the armpit. Now tries for an arm bar with 18 seconds left. Able to get the far side wrist of Clark. Now steps over. Has Clark on his back. Forsyth has Clark on his back. And there's the fall. Max Forsyth, the sophomore for Charles City. Pins Dirk Clark for the Cora to give the Comets a 13 to nothing lead. Let's move on to 132. It's Kellen O'Shea for the Cora. And Jake Nickel for Charles City. Nickel coming in a record of 11 and 7. O'Shea is 5 and 0 here on the season. O'Shea, the sixth ranked wrestler in class 3-8 here at 132. He was able to win a match at 145 last week. O'Shea directly into Nickel right away. Able to get a quick takedown 12 seconds in and killing up by a 2-0 margin. Nickel able to break free as he got to his feet and Kellen just basically let him go. And it's a 2-1 lead for Kellen O'Shea. Forehead to forehead tie with both men as they work towards the scorer's table on the far side. Kellen trying to trap that head and they both step out of bounds. 117 left here in the period. O'Shea with a 2 1 lead trying to pick up the first win for the Dakota Vikings. O'Shea. As the arms tied up, both men in the standing position as they work towards the Charles City corner. And they go out of bounds with 58 seconds left here in the period. Here's O'Shea charging into Nickel, and O'Shea able to get another takedown to make it a 4 1 lead. And now O'Shea. Going with the cross face and now has Nickel on his back. Not enough to warrant back points to this point. Kellen working off to the side. Doesn't have an arm or anything trapped, but he's working the upper body pretty well as they step out of bounds with 23.5. Left here in the first period. 
O'Shea with the 4-1 lead. The sixth ranked wrestler at 132 trying to pick up the first win of the night for the Vikings. Vikings trail at 13 and nothing. We're wrestling at 132. We started at 113. Comets defeated Walk On earlier tonight by a 78 to nothing margin. Coming up Saturday, we'll have updates from the Chris Flanagan Wrestling Invitational. We'll have updates on FM 100.5 beginning at 11. And we'll also have a webcast. We tried this on the Southwind Invitational. We're going to try it again. On Saturday, as the second period begins with O'Shea in the top position leading by a 4-1 to margin, go to kdecradio.net, go to the sports section, go to that link. We will have a webcast all day Saturday at the Chris Flanagan Wrestling Invitational. Here's O'Shea rolling through. He's able to get Nickel on his back for a count of three. O'Shea... Working through the crotch, now working the arm bar on the same side. It's the far side away from Kellen right now. The grip has not been gotten rid of, so the two points still pending. Mike Denner uh, holding them off to the side. Now the grip is loosened, and two near-fall points awarded to Kellen. And it's a 6-1 lead for O'Shea with 105 left here in the second period. And now O'Shea able to get Nickel on his back once again, but only with a one count. O'Shea has the arm and a wrist. A wing and a wrist for O'Shea, but he can't keep it. Now Nickel trying to get to his feet, but pretty good upper body pressure from O'Shea to keep him in the down position for now. 33 seconds left in the period. O'Shea leading by a 6-1 to one margin. Charles City leading the duel 13 to nothing. O'Shea working off to the side. Still has the arms trapped. Can't uh, make anything move with it. And Nickel able to get the escape. It's a 6-2 lead for Kellen O'Shea. But O'Shea single, switches off to a double, keeps charging, steps over. Nickel able to elude the takedown for now, but can't do it. As O'Shea kept charging into him, Kellen with his third takedown of the night to go along with two near fall points. And it's an 8-2 to two lead as the whistle sounds to end the second period. So 8-2 the score. Kellen O'Shea with the lead. And O'Shea will start down here in the third period. O'Shea working off to the or nickel, I should say, working par parallel as the arms tied up of O'Shea has control of both wrists. And now he works off to the side, now trying to cradle him up, working through the crotch area. Now he has control of the head, but O'Shea steps up to a tripod position. If Nickel cannot keep this grip, he's going to be in trouble as Kellen tries to step over, but Nickel still able to keep the grip. Kellen still in a tripod position with 122 left in the period. O'Shea. Still in that tripod. Neither man is in is moving to an advantage point. Denner's gonna let him uh, wrestle here. And now able to break him back down is Nickel. Nickel trying to put the legs in, but he's riding a little high. Kellen billied out on the mat right now with 45 seconds left in the period. And now, finally, a stalemate called by Mike Denner. Forty-two point three seconds left here in the third period. And O'Shea will start in the down position. O'Shea trying to switch, but Nichols still has control of the front head. O'Shea trying to get to his feet, but 
Nickel reaches for the thigh and knocks O'Shea back down to the mat. Kellen was kind of sitting Indian style there for a second, but Nickel still in control of him, but he's not scoring any points right now. Nickel still with control of that wrist, charging into O'Shea. Kellen not doing a lot, but really doesn't have to do a lot in this situation now. Kellen steps over, gets the reversal, and now has Nickel on his back. Two seconds left in the period. He won't have enough time to complete the fall, but the reversal will give him a major decision. And I think he might have gotten a couple on the back. But nonetheless, it's still an eight-point margin and a major decision for Kellen O'Shea. At 132 pounds, O'Shea gets the victory. Four to court. And Isaiah Mitchell is up now for the Vikings. He will take on Wyatt Forsyth for Charles City, the number eight ranked kid at this weight class in 2A. Wyatt is 12 and 4. Mitchell, the freshman, is 4 and 17 right now. Vikes, obviously, the underdogs in this match, but. Can you avoid getting this match to that bonus point uh, end of things? Looking for those little things to improve on as the match continues. It's 13 to 4. As Wyatt Forsyth able to get the takedown on Isaiah. And Isaiah trails it by a 2 0 margin. Isaiah up to a tripod position and Forsyth basically lets him out. And it's a 2-1 advantage with a minute 17 left here in the first period. Forsyth in on a leg, trying to advance. Mitchell goes down to that ankle to try to stop the advancement. He can't keep the grip on the ankle. Forsyth able to get around, get the takedown to make it 4-1. He lets up Mitchell to make it 4-2. 55 seconds left here in the period. Forty-five seconds left in the period now as uh, both men in an ear-to-ear time. Forsyth off to a double, steps over, covers, gets the takedown to make it 6-2. And now he'll try to do something to try to turn Mitchell, but Mitchell able to spin away and get out of bounds, but no loss of control. It's a 6-2 lead. And he'll let up Mitchell on the optional start on the restart, Will Forsyth. And Forsyth leads it by a 6-3 margin and gets a quick takedown at the end, or with 22 seconds left here in the period. Forsyth leading by an 8-3 margin. Wyatt Forsyth, the senior with the 12-4 record. Isaiah Mitchell, just a freshman. One of those kids that have... Getting the opportunity to wrestle varsity. The experience again, and hopefully it will pay dividends down the road. Period comes to a close. Forsyth leading 8-3, and he'll take down to start the second period. Mitchell will cover. Forsyth hits a switch and covers up Mitchell now tries to cradle him up has one arm around the leg the other controlling the right shoulder of Mitchell he still keeps the grip on the leg Forsyth working well off to the side there Isaiah reaching for the right leg of Forsyth to try to stop his momentum the reversal makes it a 10-3 lead for Forsyth with a minute 25 left here in the second period and now Forsyth has the leg in, has the cross face in, has gotten a couple of back points. 115 left here in the second period. Mitchell able to belly out for the moment. The upper body grip still established, but now the points are given for Forsyth to make it 13 to 4. So let up Mitchell to make it 13 to 4. Now Isaiah will reach for a shot, perhaps from a little too far away. Forsyth releases him right 
or gets the takedown right away and releases him right away to make it 15 to 5. 15 5. Forsyth with the lead with 35 seconds left here in the period. Ear to ear tie between Mitchell and Forsyth. 22 seconds left in the period and another quick takedown for Isaiah to Forsyth to make it 17 to 5. Nice thing about wrestling a duel like this, uh, Charles City and Decorah, a couple of uh, teams with a couple of bigger rosters in the Northeast Iowa Conference. So tonight's one of these nights where you can bring the majority of your kids along and they're going to get a match as the whistle sounds to end the second period. It'll be a 17 to 5 lead for Wyatt Forsyth as we go to the third and Isaiah Mitchell will start in the top position. Duel to this point. At 113, Adam Stout for Charles City, a 9-3 victory over Carter Hubcat. 120, Johnny Etherington with an 11-0 victory on Devin Stortz. At 126, Max Forsyth for Charles City with a fall in a minute 50 over Dirk Clark of Decorah. Kellen O'Shea gets Decorah's first victory at 132. Kellen with a 10-2 victory over Jake Nickel. Reversal for Forsyth makes it 18 to 5. As we wrestle here at 138. And at 36 left here in the period, another takedown. And that makes it 20 to 5, and that'll end it. A technical fall in 427. As Wyatt Forsyth beats Isaiah Mitchell. And the lead extends to 18 to 4 for Charles City. And Alex Mitchell for Charles City will wrestle. He's the eighth-ranked kid at 145. And he will wrestle Kennedy Folkadol. Folkadol in his first match of this calendar year. He was sick against West Delaware last week. Alex Mitchell uh, says on the uh, stat sheet only 0-1 on the season. He gets a takedown on Kennedy on the side of the mat. And Mitchell makes it two to nothing. Volkadol over on the season four and ten. All of the matches he has wrestled have been on the varsity. Mitchell trying to get the legs in on Volkadol here. Kennedy with the arms free to this point, but now Mitchell has a cross face in, a cradle in, and a fall. 32 second fall for Alex Mitchell. And the Comets extend their lead to 24 to 4. And let's move on to 152. It's Zach Milks for Charles City. And he will take on Alec Felstrol for Decora. Felstrol on the season with a 12 and 6 record. Alex is a junior and Zach Milks is a senior and Milks with a nice record of 13 to 4. Felschul quick off the whistle has control of the leg of Milks but Milks keeps circling around with the leg he has free he's able to cover Felschul and Felschul gives up a takedown to make it 2 to nothing and Felschul went down to the knee of Milks and Felschul was bending that knee backward a potentially dangerous situation as Milks lets up Felstrow on the optional start to make it 2-1 to 134 left here in the first period this is Vikings Radio 1240 KDC and KDCRadio.net Darren Swenson with you from walk-on tonight to Cora Wrestling Charles City right now and they will wrestle the walk-on Indians later on tonight two more duels to go on the conference end of things as Milks gets another takedown to make it 4-1. So far, Charles City leading the duel 24-4. The only win for the Cora, a major decision for Kellen O'Shea. Felstrow led up by Milks to make it 4-2. Felstrow in on a shot. Milks able to control the front head. Felstrow reaching for the leg of Milks. Milks does a nice job 
of continually moving. Now Milks reaches for the leg of Felstrel. Felstrel able to not let him get it. Milks circles around and eventually gets his third takedown of the match. And it's 6-2 to Milks. Again Saturday, Decorah will be at the Flanagan Invitational. And home meets the next two Thursday nights. Next week it's Decorah and Walk-On. And then the Decorah duels on the 18th of this month. And then Cresco on the 23rd. Milk's working off to the side. Has the leg trapping the one arm of Felshul. And now working an arm bar on the far side. Alec able to get the... One arm free. The arm bar is still established for Milks, and Milks now lets go of that arm bar as he puts a leg in, but the period comes to a close. And Milks leads by a 6 2 margin. He'll defer his choice. And Felschul will go down to start the second period. 24 4 Comets lead the duel. And Milks leading Felschul here at 152 by a 6 to 2 margin. Of course, the Northeast Iowa Conference Tournament going to be at Decorah this year. That will be on the 1st of February. And Decorah this year is a 3A team. So there will not be any sectional tournaments. As a good uh, pinning combination as Milks has Felschel's arms tied up. He has him on his back. Grip held tight. Felstrel trying to fight his way out of it. Alec trying to bridge. Milks has the chest-to-chest grip pretty tight. Mike Denner down, taking a long peek on the mat. 1.13 left here in the second period. Felstrel trying to kick out of it, but Milks again has this pretty tight. Bit surprised that Alec has lasted as long as he's did, as he has to this point. Still 58 seconds to go, and there's the fall. Now, Zach Milks with the fall in 303 over Alec Felstuhl, and the Comets have taken a 30 to 4 lead. Let's move on to 160. Cody Rittner for Decora. A 9 and 10 record. He will take on Seth Nickel. For Charles City. Pair of seniors, Nickel with a nine and eight record right now. So at least on paper, this one a semi reasonable matchup. Only win for the court to this point. A Kellen O'Shea major decision. Here's a double leg attempt. By Nickel, he tries to lift Rittner. Rittner doesn't let him do it. Rittner with control of the head as both men go out of bounds. 137. Left here in the period. Thirty to four, Charles City with the advantage. Rittner trying to stuff the head and circle around. Can't make anything work. Now both men back into ear-to-ear tie. Reaching for a shot is Nickel. He's not able to get the job done there. Nickel and Rittner in an ear-to-ear tie. Once again, Nickel reaches for a shot. Nickel. Again, reaching for a shot. Rittner able to stuff the head and push into him, but both men go out of bounds. 55 seconds left here in the period. The lead is Charles City, 30-4. to We wrestle at 160. We started at 113. It's 0-0 between Nickel and Rittner here at 160. Nickel and Rittner again. And that ear-to-ear tie towards the side of the mat. Nickel 
or Rittner reaches for a shot that time. Nickel now able to step that front ahead, reaching for the shot. His nickel has control of the leg of Rittner. Rittner able to escape that grip, circle around, and get a takedown with five seconds left in the period. And they go out of bounds with 3.2 seconds left, and Rittner with a 2-0 advantage. Rittner will try to cover for the remaining 3.2 seconds, and he's able to do it and give him credit. He tried to lock up some sort of a pinning combination there. Didn't have the time to make anything work, but a lot of times when you're in that top position after getting a takedown, you just want to hold the guy there, and Cody actually tried something. Now, you can argue, is that the smart time to try something? Who knows, but Cody leads it 2 nothing. Nichols starts in the down position. Or uh, Nichols starts in the down position here in the second period. Cody working off to the side. Trying to lock the elbow on the one side. Try to put hip pressure on the other side. Nickel able to get to his feet now. Rintner trying to cradle him. He loses that grip, so Nickel will get the escape. And it's 2-1 lead for Rittner. Both men back to that ear-to-ear tie. Both men break free, and now they go out of bounds with a minute 13 left here in the period. Recapping the duel to this point. Adam Stout at 113 with a 9-3 win over Carter Hubka. Johnny Etherington for Charles City with a major decision, 11-0 on Devin Stortz at 120. At 126, Max Forsyth with a fall at a minute 50 on Dirk, Dirk Clark of Decura. At 132, Kellen O'Shea with a major decision on Jake Nickel for Charles City, 10 to 2. And Charles City has won the rest. Wyatt Forsyth with a technical fall in 427, 20 to 5 over Isaiah Mitchell. His blood time here with 49 seconds left in the second period. At 145, Alex Mitchell with a fall in 32 seconds over Kennedy Folkadol of Decor. At 152, Zach Milks with a fall in 303 for Charles City over Alec Felstuhl of Decor. And at 160, Cody Rettner leading 2 to 1 with 49 and a half seconds left here in the second period. Blood time remedied for Seth Nickel. Rittner will go back to the center of the mat. And Mike Denner will blow his whistle to restart this match. Rittner leading 2-1. to one. He got a late takedown in that first period. Nickel able to get out after starting in the down position here in the second period. Rittner on the edge of the mat. Nickel tried to double leg. Wasn't able to get the job done, so they go out of bounds with 31.4 left here in the period. Rittner trying for a shot. Nickel tries to control the front head. Rittner getting out of that grip. Rittner on a uh, front headlock. Nickel reaching for the shot once again. Rittner controls the head once again. And now Nickel looking for the throw, but both men go out of bounds. 16 seconds left here in the period. Nickel in on a shot from a long ways away. Cody able to stuff the head, trying to circle around. Seven seconds left in the period. Nickel reaches for the leg of Rittner, stops his momentum. Rittner escapes that grip, gets a late second period takedown to take a 4-1 to lead. So Rittner... With a 4-1 to lead on his second takedown of the night. And he will choose neutral to start the third period. Forehead to forehead tie with both men to start the third. Nickel has not been in on any serious shots as Cody Rittner trying to win his 10th match of the year. Recall Rittner was a district qualifier last year. and Nickel... Try to snap down and snap the head gear off of 
Cody Rittner. And now some more blood time for Nicholas. He'll go off to the side to get attended to by the training staff. Rittner will go to the corner to get some coaching tips from Coach Friedhoff and Coach Gene Adams. Only one of the night thus far for the Corre, a 30-4 win. Or a major decision win by Kellen O'Shea at 132. 30-4, Charles City leads the duel. We're wrestling at 160. We started at 113. Charles City with a 78-8-0 win on walk-on in the first duel here tonight. Goran walk-on will wrestle again next week. That's just the way they do it now in this conference schedule. Wrestling coaches got together and didn't want to wrestle any duels the week of the conference wrestling meet, and they didn't want to do any duels the first week of December, so that's why you're seeing more of these double duels. There's one team that you're going to wrestle twice, because with the 17 conference, that's just the way it's got to be. The Decora, I believe, I'm sure somebody will send me a text message if I'm uh, not mistaken. I believe the Decora walk-on duel next week will be the duel, if I'm not mistaken. If I'm wrong, somebody please uh, send me a message on that, since walk-on and Decora will be wrestling their second duel later on tonight. This will be the Decora Charles City Conference duel. This is the only time Decora will wrestle Charles City in dual competition. Both men go out of bounds. 127 left here in the third period and more blood time necessary for Seth Nickel now. So the duels that Decora pretty much after Saturday, will, the next time they will have a tournament competition will be the Northeast Iowa Conference Tournament. Well, a lot of teams lost some matches in December, but Decora has not lost any matches uh, as of right now. Knock on wood. Hopefully the weather can continue to be a wrestling fan. Rittner leading 4-1 here at 160 pounds. Forehead to forehead tie. Now Nickel looking for a big throw. Rittner fights that maneuver off, and they go out of bounds with a minute 13 left here in the third period. 30-4 to four lead on the duel as Nickel tries a level change. Rittner able to get the hips back. He's able to stuff the head. Reaching for a shot once again is Nickel. Nickel getting to the leg of Rittner, Rittner able to stuff the head, circle around, but ran out of real estate on the near side of the mat as they go out of bounds with a minute left here in the third period. Minute left, third period. Nickel needs some more blood time. In case you're just joining us, Charles City leads this duel by a 30-4 to margin. Started at 113, Adam Stout for Charles City beats Carter Hubka of Decorah 9-3. At 120, Johnny Etherington with a major decision victory on Devin Stortz of Decora, 11 to nothing. Max Forsyth of Charles City with a fall at 126 on Dirk Clark of Decora. At 132, Kellen O'Shea with a major decision for Decora at 132 over Jake Nickel of Charles City. At 138, Wyatt Forsyth of Charles City with a technical fall on Isaiah Mitchell of Decora. At 145, Alex Mitchell of Charles City with a fall on Kennedy Folkadol of Decorah. At 152, Zach Milks with a fall on Alex, Fels Alex Felstrel of Decorah. And here at 160, Rittner still leads Milks by a 4-1 to one margin. Blood has been clotted, but there's more blood to clean up on the mat. So the match will continue in a delay end of things here at 160. I don't know how much progress there is yet to go at 160 on the far side. I have not been told whether or not they will uh, double up the mats. Should that condition be warranted. Mike Denner is okay with the uh, all the blood uh, getting cleaned up. Mike Denner in his 35th year of officials. 
of officiating here tonight. One of the absolute best in the state of Iowa and an awfully, awfully good guy. Comes from a great family. 48 seconds left in the period. His son, Justin, one of the assistant wrestling coaches over at Crestwood High School. And Crestwood having a darn good year to this point as well. They're wrestling OY tonight. Here's Nickel trying for a throw on Rittner. Rittner trying to circle around. Rittner able to get the hips back in with 28.9 left here in the third period. They go out of bounds. Rittner still leading by a 4-1 margin here at 160 pounds, trying to pick up the second win of the night for the Vikings. Here to ear tie with both men. That last sequence was the closest. Nicholas come to a takedown here tonight. 13 seconds left in the period, and they go out of bounds. And now more blood time for Nickel. 13 seconds left here in the period. Neither man has been able to score. Here in this, the third period. Coverage Saturday, don't forget, we'll have updates on our sister station, FM 100.5, beginning at 11 a.m., starting at 10 a.m., the Chris Flanagan Wrestling Invitational. We will do an Internet-only webcast. Go to the sports section of KDECradio.net and hear all the information all day long, hold by hold coverage like we're doing tonight. We're doing that on the Internet-only on Saturday for the Chris Flanagan Wrestling Invitational. That's at KDECradio.net. The teams that will be there, Dubuque, Hempstead, Riceville, Clayton Ridge, Elkator Central, Turkey Valley, Scott West High School out of Minnesota. Ironically, that was a high school that Gene Adams taught at and uh, coached wrestling at prior to moving back down here to Decora. Goodhue, Decora, Crestwood, and Cedar Falls. Seven seconds left in the period. Nickel looking for the big throw. Won't be able to do it. Headgear comes off. 3.4 seconds left here in the third period. As Nickel had a little shove of Tyler Rinkin afterwards. And Mike Denner with some stern words to just say no. Nickel in on a shot. Rittner able to stuff the head. And that is that. Rittner gets the second win of the night for... The Decorah Vikings, he defeats Seth Nickel here at 160 pounds by a 4-1 to margin. So Cody Rittner gets his 10th win of the season as we move on to 170. I believe this will be Luke Dixon for Decorah. And I believe it will be Jacob Page. And that will be the case. Jacob Page, your senior at 5 and 12. Luke Dixon, 3 and 5 thus far. He's 0 and 4 on varsity, but 3 and 1 on JV. But on paper, this is a matchup that Luke maybe can exploit. He's a junior. And on a shot is Page. Dixon able to get the hips back, won't be able to. Score off of that, and both men separate with 133 left here in the period. Another shot by Dixon, but no setup prior to the shot. Both men now in a forehead to forehead tie, and they separate. 124 left in the period. They wrestle towards the far side. Dixon in on a shot way too far away. Didn't try to connect with anything, and Page was basically just able to jump on top of him and get a takedown. And a 2 0 lead for Jacob Page. Here at 170 pounds. Now Page trying to tilt Dixon. Dixon gets on his back. Page getting back points right now. Page, arm around the far side hip. And an arm bar on the one side. Two back points awarded to Page, and it's 4 nothing. 
44 seconds left here in the period. Page trying to turn Dixon once again. Dixon sprawled out on the mat right now with 30 seconds left here in the period. Page once again getting some back points, but he only got a count of one that previous time. Page has Dixon's leg split, and Luke just not in a position to do much as the whistle sounds to end the period. And it is a 4 nothing lead for Jacob Page. Decora's choice, neutral the choice. But Page quickly single into a double, head outside. Good textbook takedown from Jacob Page, and it's a 6 nothing lead for Page. Page now has the a wing and a wrist. Tried for the half, didn't keep it. 137 left here in the period. A 6-0 lead for Page at 170. Charles City leading the duel 30-7. DeGuerre will wrestle walk on later on tonight. Page again working off to the side. Moves the right arm up on the back of Dixon. The left arm of Dixon free for the time being. Now Page locks up that left arm as well. 50 seconds left here in the period. Dixon going off to the side. Right arm locked up of Dixon. They'll try a little ball and chain tilt. No back points awarded. Luke in a position if he could have sat out, put some pressure on the hips of Page, he might have been able to turn him there, but to no avail. 6 nothing the lead for Page with 20 seconds left here in the period. Four mat or correction, five matches to go here in this Decorah Charles City duel. Charles City will leave after this duel, and then Decorah will wrestle walk on. The way they structure these is whoever's furthest away will wrestle first and second. Whoever's second furthest away will wrestle second and third. Period comes to a close, a 6 nothing lead for Jacob Page. And the home team also always wrestles first and third. 6 nothing the lead. Neutral start once again as Dixon able to get the head of Page. Had him on his back for a second, but Page able to roll through and counter it nicely, able to cover up Dixon for a takedown. And it is an 8 nothing lead for Jacob Page. One twenty-two left here in the period. Page tilts him and turns him. Gets three more back points to make it 11 to nothing. Now he's looking for the far side cradle. Won't be able to get that job done. But Page, for a kid that's 5-12, and 12, just kind of dominating Duke, Luke Dixon right now. Here's Page tilting them once again, getting back points. Oh, but he only got a count of one as Luke able to get the wrist free on the near side. 33 seconds left here in the period. An 11 to nothing lead for Jacob Page here in the third period. Now he's got Dixon tilted again. Got a count of three on the back. And two back points awarded by the official Mike Dinner. And it's 13 to nothing. If he can tilt him one more time, 
This could be a tech, and it will be a tech. As two more back points awarded, and that's going to be that. Jacob Page with a tech in 5.52, nothing on Luke Dixon. And now Charles City with a 35-7. to seven. Advantage on Decora. And Kyle Hageman next in line for Decora. He will take on Nick Jacobs. Jacobs, a sophomore with a record of 7-9. and nine. Hageman, a senior with a record of 3-13, and 1-12 and on varsity. In between here, they will have uh, some youth wrestling night and then uh, parents night here at Walk-On. So we will actually send it back to the studio in between because it's going to be about a 15 to 20 minute delay. As a quick takedown by Nick Jacobs gives him a 2-0 lead 20 seconds in. Hageman gets to his feet, but Jacobs maintains the hand control and returns Hageman back down to the mat. Hageman reaching for the far side. Be able to get that done now. Jacobs has a leg in. Getting to his feet is Hogman. Hogman trying to establish some hand control, but Jacobs moves down from the hips to the knees to the ankle to return Hogman to the bat. He still leads it 2 nothing. They work off to the side. 25 seconds left here in the period. And they go out of bounds. Twenty-one point nine left here in the period. Page. Leading Hageman by a two to nothing margin. Ten seconds left in the period. Hageman trailing Page by a 2-0 margin. That is the way the period will end here at 182. Again, recapping the duel, 113, Adam Stout of Charles City with a decision over Carter Hupke of Decorah. 120, Johnny Etherington of Charles City with a major decision over Devin Stortz of Decorah. 126, Max Forsyth with a fall over Dirk Clark of Decorah. 132, Kellen O'Shea with a major decision for Decorah over Jake Nickel of Charles City. And 138, Wyatt Forsyth with a technical fall over Isaiah Mitchell of Decorah. There's an escape for Page to make it 3-0, and he throws Hageman and gets the fall. A 2-10 fall for Nick Jacobs and a 41-7 lead for Charles City. Escaped. And a fall, so it's 41-7, and the Vikes are going to be open at 195. Sean Truen, who got a nice win at, down at uh, Charles City, or at West Delaware last week under the weather. Hopefully he can get back by Saturday. And let's move on to 220. Let's uh, recap, continue our recap at 145. Alex Mitchell of Charles City with a ball over Kennedy Folk at all of Decor at 152. Zach Milks with a ball over Alec Felstrow of Decor at 160. Cody Rittner for Decor with a decision victory over Seth Nickel of Charles City. At 170, Jacob Page. With a technical fall over Luke Dixon of Decorah. 182, we just saw it. 
Nick Jacobs with the fall on Kyle Hageman. Of Decor and at 195, Taylor Cole awarded a forfeit. Quick takedown here for Girl City's wrestler AJ Malloy. The freshman with a 10 and 7 record. Carter Zidlicky with the 7 and 4 record. Done some okay things at 220 pounds. Malloy now moving the arm up on the back of Carter. Won't be able to get anything done there. Malloy trying to put the head in the armpit. But Carter doing a pretty good job of keeping the hands away from Malloy. Not anything allowed to stick there. One minute left here in the period. A 47-7 lead for Charles City in the duel. Carter Zidlicky got a nice come from behind win last week. Down at West Delaware, getting to his feet is Malloy once again. So controlling the head of Zidlicky. Zidlicky getting to his feet. If he can escape the headlock of Malloy, he can get his one here with 35 seconds left in the period. Malloy able to return him back down to the mat. Now Malloy has control of the left arm of Zidlicky, trying to put the head in the armpit there. Carter trying to sit out, spins, turns, faces, gets his escape. And it's a 2-1 lead for Malloy. 12 seconds left in the period. Now Malloy looking for the throw. Lifts up Zidlicky ever so slightly and returns him to the mat for the takedown. It's a 4-1 lead for Malloy. Here at 2.20 and the period comes to a close. Zidlicky to Furs. Malloy will go down to start the second period. And Decora will wrestle, walk on. After this one is done. Malloy with another takedown off the whistle, or, or a reversal at the start of the third period, or the second period, I should say. It's a 6-1 lead for Malloy. Malloy, arm up on the back, trying to move off to the side. Zidlicky able to get that arm free. Now Malloy will move to the other arm, trying to move that one up on the back. He won't be able to do anything there. And now Carter Zidlicky hit for stalling. And I think uh, they're going to go two mats here at 285. And the mat off to our left, Brody Tupi for... Charles City will take on the Baby Bull, Austin Ashbacker for the Cora. Ashbacker, the fourth ranked heavy rate weight. And two Pete, the sophomore at one and six. Ashback, Ashbacker is four and one. 22 seconds left in the second period here at 220. And as Austin Ashbacker throws two Pete right away, he has him on his back. Two Pete able to escape out of the hold for the moment. And it's 5 1. And Austin lets him up with eight. 15 seconds gone here in the first period. Big throw there from Austin Ashbacker to make it 5-1. 6-1 still. Malloy leading Zidlicky. And another throw from Austin Ashbacker. Ashbacker had Tupi on his back. He's able to belly out of that one there. A 9-1 lead. And now Austin locks up the arm of Tupi. As the head controlled as well. And there's the fall for Austin Ashbacker. The baby bull doing what the baby bull does. A 43 second fall. That cuts the deficit to 47 to 13. And 
We're going to go down to 106 on the mat to our left. That will be Joe Kenoki for Takura. And Nate Lazier for Charles City. Kenoki at 13 and 3 on the season. And Lazier at 11 and 5. So a sophomore and a freshman. Going at it in that match. We're in the third period here at 220. Malloy still with a 7-1 lead on Carter Zidlicky with a minute 20 left. The mat to our left, no score, 15 seconds in between Lazar and Kenoki. Record-wise, that should be an interesting one down there. Zidlicky able to get to his feet, get an escape to make it 7-2 with one minute left in the period. Lazar and on a shot attempt on Joe. Joe trying to stop his momentum. He has the head controlled on the front side. Lazar has been unable to improve his position, and both men break free. Back to 220, 53 seconds left in the period. Malloy is still leading by a 7-2 margin. Kenoki in on a shot on Lazar. Lazar able to get the hips back with a minute left in the period. Over at 106. Malloy leading 7-2. And they go out of bounds with 33 seconds left in the period. Lazar has control of the head of Kenoki, and Kenoki gives up a takedown to make it a 2 to nothing lead. For Lazar, with 38 seconds left here in the period. 26 seconds left in the third period over there. Malloy throws Zidlicky. He's got Carter on his back. Carter... Able to stay off his back for now, but Malloy has the grip in tight. Malloy gets the fall in 547. Malloy gets the fall in 547 to make it 53-13. So we're down to one match to go here in the Charles City duel with Lazier leading Kenoki 2 to nothing. Lazier, a lanky kid, puts a leg in. Trying to work a half on the other side and won't be able to make the pinning combination work, but Lazar leads it 2 nothing as we go to the second period. Neutral start for Lazar here in the second period as Kenoki deferred his choice. Forehead to forehead tie, Kenoki in on a shot on Lazar. He's in on the thigh, but his head's near the mat right now. Lazar trying to stuff that head and get the hips back. He's been able to do so to this point. Kenoki has not improved his position since getting to the leg. Now Lazar grabs the knee of Kenoki to try to stop the momentum, and a stalemate called by the other official here tonight, Eric Eckerman. 122 left here in the second period, a 2-0 lead for Nate Lazier. Charles City leads the duel 53-13. Lazier in on a shot, steps through to a peak through position. Kenoki grabbing the ankle to try to stop the momentum. Lazier trying to circle around. One minute left here in the period. And there's the takedown awarded. Lazier. Makes it a 4-0 advantage for him. Lazier, the freshman for Charles City with an 11-5 record. Kenoki at 13-3. This is one of those matches that's probably going to be key prior to the conference tournament seeding meeting. Hard to believe three weeks from Saturday already. Conference tournament Saturday as Kenoki hit for stalling. Doke. 5 nothing the lead for Lazar. Lazar lets Kenoki go. Now goes down to the thigh of Kenoki. Kenoki has the arms tied up of Lazar. And now the escape awarded. To make it 5-1 with 5 seconds left here in the second period. Lazar tries for a shot. Kenoki able to get the hips back. And the second period comes to a close. With Lazar leading Kenoki by a... 5 to 1 margin and Joe will go down to start the third period.
Lazier immediately gets the legs in. As the legs around the hips of Kenoki now trying to work. A tilt on the other side. That doesn't work. Tries the cross face now. As both men in a sitting position. Lazier has the legs in. Now if Joe trying to get to that peek through position. He can shake him off as Lazier was riding a bit high. Perhaps he could have gotten a uh, reversal there, but now Lazier controls the arms of Kenoki. And the momentum stopped for Joe for the time being. 105 left here in the third period, a 5-1 lead for Lazier. 53-13, Charles City leading the duel. 113. Adam Stout with a decision on Carter Hupka of Decora, 120. Johnny Etherington of Charles City with a major decision on Devin Stortz of Decora. 126, Max Forsyth with a fall on Dirk Clark of Decora. Stalemate called with 46 and a half seconds left as Kenoki trails at 5-1, still in the down position. Kellen O'Shea with a major decision at 132 for Decora on Jake Nickel of Charles City. Joe able to get to his feet. Trying to get the hips back, able to get the escape to make it 5-2, but Lazier right back in on a takedown to make it 7-2. At 138, Wyatt Forsyth with a technical fall on Isaiah Mitchell of Decorah. 145, Alex Mitchell with a fall on Kennedy Folkadol of Decorah. 152, Zach Milks with a fall on Alec Felstrel of Decorah. 160, Cody Rittner with a decision on Seth Nickel of Charles City at 170. Jacob Page with the technical fall on Luke Dixon of Decorah. 182, Nick Jacobs with a fall on Kyle Hageman of Decorah. 7-3 the score, and that is the way it's going to end up. Lazier beats Kenoki 7-3. So Charles City wins the duel 56-13. Continuing with our recap, Jacob Page at 195. Uh, Taylor Cole received a... Forfeit at 220. AJ Malloy with a fall on Carter Zidlicky of Decora at 285. The baby ball Austin Ashbacker with 43 second fall on Brody Tupp of Charles City and Nate Lazier with the 7 3 win over Joe Kenoki of Decora. So it's 56 13. Charles City will get the victory and Decora will wrestle walk on and it'll be about a 15 to 20 minute delay here. So we will rejoin you about 8 o'clock tonight. We'll rejoin you about 8 o'clock tonight as Decora will wrestle walk-on. You're listening to Decora Viking Wrestling on Vikings Radio 1240 KDEC.
Thank you. 